Oh, hey, man, how's it going? I'm trying to learn a new skill. Is there any chance you could help me out by letting me test it on you? Oh, yeah, man, sure, anything. What is it? Acupuncture. Oh, God. I do not know what I'm doing. Ladies, gentlemen, and monsters of all ages, once upon a time, back way near the beginning of Monster Hunter World, way back when I was making my second video ever, yeah, that long ago, we explored the idea of a certain build. Something around elevating a strange and unusual attack to unbelievable heights capable of toppling even the largest of foes, especially the largest of foes. And thus, the Dragon Piercer only build was born. Was it effective? Sort of. Against big creatures, it did pretty well, but it was still more of a fun niche build than anything considerably comparable to the regular playstyle of the weapon against most monsters. Then came Iceborne, and with Iceborne came gear strong enough to make Dragon Piercer a comparably strong and extremely viable weapon. And also with Iceborne came another challenge, a new attack for the bow, one also built around the idea of a single big punch attack, but in an entirely different fashion. If Dragon Piercer is the pierce ammo version of bow, then this is the spread ammo. This is Thousand Dragons, a single spread shot combined with the loading of your clutch claw and any slinger ammo that you hold to release a specially affected powerful blast. A powerful blast that can be affected by a number of skills, including affinity. What does this mean? It means opportunity. Back at the start of the expansion, I tried to make a Thousand Dragons build work, and it did pretty decently, but just like Dragon Piercer before it, the first possible build was more of a niche fun meme build than one legitimately comparable to the bow's other playstyles. Now, that has changed. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you larger infinite dragons, because the only way to have more than infinity is just a larger infinite. Math, 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 math. And yes, this is in fact the version of the Thousand Dragons build that is legitimately good enough to bring to any hunt in front of you, though it does definitely destroy some monsters a little bit harder than others. Want the numbers then? Well, quick recap for those who don't know, Thousand Dragons uses your slinger ammo as part of the attack and does also use it with no ammo and it will still function. The damage appears to be based around a couple of strange factors, but it boils down to a Thousand Dragons shot with no ammo at all will hit the training cart for up to 1300 damage. A shot with a full pocket of stones or red pits will do around 1745 damage and then the king of this the piercing pod does up to a nasty 2500 damage for a single well-aimed shot five blue tipped with armor piercing dots Every other type of slinger ammo in the game lines up somewhere between no ammo and stones and red pits, so just grab those as it's convenient. But you see what I mean, right? This thing works, and this is the training room without agitator or coalescence. As for the build itself, well, it is only something that we've been able to do since the last update, as you may have guessed. Though we do start off with a bit of a familiar face in the weapon category of the Safi Jiva Frostbow. It's worth mentioning that Frost is only the best one against monsters that are weak to ice. You'll want to swap this out based on your opponent's resistances for another elemental bow if you are hard min maxing but for the sake of some relevant armor pieces having an eight ice attack this seemed the most pleasing way to show it off to you all the augments are one element up and two attack and the awakening abilities are three attack fives one attack six and then velcana divinity which is the secret to unlocking our armor's double set bonus combination of velcana four set bonus and you guessed it fatalis two set the thing about fatalis two set is that with most weapons and play styles the secret skills that it unlocks have fairly limited ways to increase your offense itself. This build does not have that issue, mostly thanks to Slinger Capacity, because of the way that Slinger Capacity affects your damage. So, filling in the decorations then, you'll see how this all comes together to get every last drip of power into this ability. Like, this is the most packed in build I have ever made, skills wise. It still has some skills that I'd like to put into off the damage, but they, they just don't fit at this point. And that's the first time I've been able to say that since Fatality armor was released. That said, does it really need to be better? No, I just want it to be. 
As a whole then, the set comes with 7 Agitator for a massive chunk of raw attack up and 20% affinity when a monster is enraged, 6 attack boost for a large chunk of raw attack and 5% affinity just in general, Slinger capacity 5 to increase our Slinger ammo, well, capacity, which also increases our damage as it gives us more ammo to pump into 1000 dragons, 4 critical eye for 20% affinity, 3 ice attack as a nice little byproduct of the build, 3 critical boost to boost the damage of our critical attacks, 3 weakness exploit for 50% percent more affinity against a tenderized monster part three critical draw is a rarely used byproduct of this build three peak performance for a ton of raw attack up when at full health three coalescence for a good chunk of raw attack and element attack up after dropping a blight two health boost as it's just needed against some endgame monsters two spread slash power shots for 20 percent more damage on thousand dragons two special ammo boost for another 20 percent more damage on thousand dragons two quick sheath and resuscitate as useful byproducts of the build and then the Valkana set bonuses of Crit Element and Frostcraft, as well as Fatalis 2 set Inheritance. On top of this, I would recommend Rocksteady and Temporal Mantle as normal, however the controlled burst nature of this build could work quite well with Evasion Mantle, so consider each fight as you go into it. To quell the uprising in the comments, yes, the Crit Draw chest that I use is necessary, even though we barely use Crit Draw itself, the skills just wind up being worse if you use Fatalis chest and Valkana gloves, unfortunately. As well, it is definitely worth replacing a double attack jewel with clutch claw boost if you are hunting solo as tenderizing is super helpful for this build with that covered let's move on to the play style of this build do you not know how to use this uh, and this one is a relatively simple to play and this one is relatively simple to play, provided that you go into the hunt with the right knowledge. First, matching elements is always important, but consider the area that you're going to be fighting the most in. Are there stones or red pits nearby? Then this build becomes significantly stronger over the course of an entire hunt with these respawning piles and everything. Does the monster drop piercing paws when you do a tenderized attack? Then it becomes damn near overpowered for the start of the hunt while you can create stinger ammo by tenderizing your opponent, putting out nearly a true charge worth of damage if it's aimed and planned right. But the important thing is even without slinger ammo, this build does do a ton of damage so you can bring it against whatever you want. Now that we're through with that, we can go through the actual gameplay loop. Assuming that the monster won't drop any more slinger ammo and there is no accessible stones or red pits nearby, your focus is to use thousand dragons at close range on a tenderized body part, then sheath to fill your frostcraft bar back up, and repeat. Because of the crit draw in our build, the tenderized attack actually hits pretty damn hard, and we use it a lot to create the maximum amount of slinger ammo that it lets us in a quest, which unfortunately is quite limited. As a result, there are two ways to do this. You can either spam tenderize your attacks at the beginning of the quest, create a large pile of slinger ammo below you, and just spam out your strongest hits one after the other right at the beginning of the quest, or you can do it a bit more naturally. Tenderize a part to actually tenderize it, and just have the ammo be the byproduct that drops, then use the ammo. Then just fire the Amalus Thousand Dragons until it's time to tenderize another part of the monster. This build is pretty unusual and may seem a little hard to wrap your head around, but you have a surprising amount of control over when you deal your biggest damage, when you can pump out just a little bit more an attack that you're sure will hit perfectly, even though every attack has the same animation and takes the same amount of time. And seriously, do not underestimate the Amalus Thousand Dragons. I told you, it does like 1300 damage on the training cart. It is good use it if you love the idea of a hit and run bow playstyle, but think that dragon piercer takes too long to wind up this might just be the build for you. As for which monsters drop which ammo, there isn't any super easy classification to make it memorable. They are all done on more of an individual basis. However, I will tell you that the list of monsters that specifically drop piercing pods and are therefore weakest to this build are Titsi Yaku, Yangaruga and his variant, Fulgur Anjanath, Acidic Glavinus, Great Juros, Odogaron, Baryoth, Great Jagras, Toby Kadachi and his subspecies, Zenogre and his subspecies, Legiana and his variant, Polimu and his subspecies, Nargakuga, Beatotis, Tigrex and his subspecies, and then Namiel on occasion, as well as regular Valhazak. All right, everyone, I've been Cotton Dinosaur, and this has been one of my favorite builds, the larger infinite dragons. Do you like this build as much as I do? What kind of interesting or crazy builds would you like to see us do in the future? Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet.
This is the brand new outro to tell you all the things that you do that we love. So let's start with something simple and say, oh, we love your eyes. When they're watching us play video games, when we make a bunch of jokes that are kind of lame. Or when they gaze upon our failures as we try to kill the monsters or important, important news about the kingdom and Amelia. Rage, Cotton, and Hollow are all here talking about the things you want to hear. So if you want to be the first to hear, like and subscribe and the bell and we'll cheer. Some of you are patrons even though we are all the noobs and you're the pros. There's nothing we can do to thank you. No, really, there's nothing we could possibly do. Goodbye.